It's your boy, when JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. It is Tuesday. We are on time. The crew is here. Uh, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube and uh, get yourself linked in on Spotify. We can take comments now. Somebody threw a comment up on an episode that was like a year old. I was like, dang, you deep in the vault. But that's what you could do now. You can go leave comments. Um, also, find us on the iTunes. Uh, but yeah, share, subscribe. If you're on Instagram and you're checking in, you're going to forget this, but we close out in the hour on the dot because as long as Instagram lets us go live, I appreciate you for being here. Unlike the Phillies, <sighs> say what's up to the people, guys. How you guys doing? You're today? miserable. Yeah. <laughs> y'all weren't here last week. I had to tell y'all I was going to replace y'all to get y'all back up in here. Yeah. <laughs> Heard that nonsense. Y'all be busy <laughs> out here growing a mustache like he's about to kidnap some kids in a minivan. Um, <laughs> I, I don't I look, Harry. I'm gonna I'm rip on you because I don't, you know, I mean, you're you're amphibious, you can train. Yes, and, exactly. Is the right word. What's, what, what, what do uh, uh, octopuses do when they be changing their colors? Camouflage, camouflage. Yeah, you can <laughs> anything, but the whole uh, sn- snatching candy and you know, 70s porn music popping up my brain. It's not <laughs> you, I know, I know it's going around uh, white. <laughs> It is, it is Burt Reynolds week. Uh, <laughs> Burt Reynolds or uh, Pancho Villa, something like that. It is it is crazy uh, mustache season. We got an email. Thank about you, it. sir. Thank you, Ryan. I <laughs> appreciate <laughs> you. Yeah, hey, look, this, this, this little thin thin stash is all I ever got. I can't <laughs> like that. My bush, my bush don't get that deep. You know what I mean? I'm just sitting there like, you know what I mean? I can't yeah, more, th- more thickness to come. Be just hey, 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 hey. <laughs> family show. Family uh, show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the uh, somebody said, "Oh, the, the uh, Chuck said the bullpen is going to be fine." So let's let's talk about the Phillies. Jason, what 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 trades and moves did we do? Did we do we do anything? Uh, I mean, I, I don't really like the moves that they did. We got uh, Austin Hayes hit a home run today. He though, did. So that was yes, cool. he did. He did. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was cool. But you know, we fortified the bullpen. You know, the bullpen that just gave up the lead right as we started to come on the air. Because <laughs> this is a miserable time to be a Phillies fan. It's it's a so I, now the Dodgers are getting upset. My favorite thing is like I have been quiet. If you mm-hmm. don't have, watch or check in on the show, the last three weeks since the All Star break, I haven't said one word about losing. We we come on, we talk about the team. We're still pumped about the team. We're happy. You lose four series in a row. Now it's time for me to tell you, yo, get your shit together. I I can't just continue and just be like, oh, I know it's a long season. I know it's dog days. I know that it happens to multiple teams, but. When you were people were sitting there saying it's the best Phillies team they've ever seen in their life, and you know people were just already booking cruises and 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 broad street parties, like I know it's a long season, but you got to start sprinkling in some wins here. I even personally gave them the benefit of the doubt that they hadn't played at home in a while, because that seems what happens with their lulls, right? When they go on these stretches where they're on the road for a long period of time, they can't get back in the groove until they get home. Well, now they've been home, and I mean I know again we're not playing tomato cans. But we're not supposed to be a tomato can either, right? We're supposed to be one of the best teams in baseball. Exactly. So win a series. Everybody <laughs> made a can at this point when you have the best team in baseball. And the same holes that we've seen for the past two years in the postseason just keep mm-hmm. showing up, showing up, showing up. Yeah, I mean, it's honestly crushing that Mason Miller got hurt when he did because I would have loved to. And I think, we, you know, I probably go back on the previous episodes. I was probably uh, hedging uh, the farm system. But honestly, like, I wish he was healthy. I wish we traded everything for him because, like we're saying right now, the pieces we got. I mean, I don't I like Carlos Estevez a little bit. But I mean, is that is that exciting? Like a Mason Miller would have been? Absolutely not. So, I mean, we'll see what happens come postseason. But this is this is the time, right? This is the time I didn't want to like be as good as we were all year and then, you know, have something happen right at the end of the year. This is kind of a nice little buffer we got going. So uh, <laughs> that's my that's my positive spin. Yeah. Uh, hooray for Johnny on IG says it's about to be five series and it does look like it's about to be five series. <laughs> and uh, it, I mean, the it, Yankees been struggling, too. So that's not that's not good. But that and that's the problem. The Yankees been struggling, too. Yeah. And they rocked our world last night. And uh, OK. So we're jumping all over the place. We'll, we'll get back to the trades. Jason, go look up the trades so you can tell us exactly what the trades are. Right. When I come back, you can say exactly what it is. 
the the thing that I hate about losing in general is like, oh, you lost, that's fine. But now we're losing to New York, mm -hmm. and New York fans are traveling down here, and they're loud and they're obnoxious, and they're cheering MVP for Judge mm. here in Philadelphia to a sold out crowd because we always sell out. And normally when we sell out, it's our fans, but you could see what happens because New York is so close. Um, and the Yankees are not for nothing. They're a front running bandwagon team where they have fans everywhere, yeah. you know, coast to coast. So their, their fans don't really have to travel that much. They're going to have fans in different places. So I get it, but I don't like the fact that I'm sitting here watching games and having no. to hear. It's crushing too because I was just talking to my buddy who's a Mets fan uh, recently, and the Mets just beat the Yankees in, in that Subway Series, and the Mets are the best team in New York over the last you know month or, or plus. So it's one of those things where it's like, man, <laughs> I mean, you know, do some um, MLB math, and uh, we're we're worse than the Mets right now. It's not it's not good. No, we're, we're two games or one well one game above five hundred now. If we lose today, we're going to be five hundred even um, since right before the All Star break. Right, and the Mets are on fire right now yep. again we know we said it long season lows they were trash pandas to start but now they're catching a groove but the thing that kills you with that is, is that everybody keeps laughing at a lot of phillies fans we hate atlanta because atlanta talks a lot of trash yes we beat them in the postseason last few years but everybody keeps saying aha atlanta keeps losing atlanta's got injuries out the wazoo and they've still tried to make trades and yep. make moves to fill the holes that they've got injuries in they've got season ending injuries and they're, they're still trying really hard to maintain and stay afloat. But every time somebody's like, feel like, I had a loss, I'm like, I'm not worried about the Braves. You need to be worried about the Mets. And I know they're the Mets. But at the same time. They're reverse they're, Mets in right now. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, they, they, are, they are in a groove right now. So, Jason, go, go, tell, me, tell me what we got. All right, so we added closer Carlos Estevez for two of their uh, top ten prospects, George Klassen and Samuel Alda Jerry, I believe you say the last name. Added Austin Hayes from the Orioles for uh, Kristen Pache and Sir Anthony Dominguez. And then we added Tanner Banks, a lefty from the White Sox for a single-A prospect. And we ended up trading Gregory Soto with another bullpen move to the Orioles to get their number eight pitching prospect, Seth Johnson. Why do the Orioles want to be the Phillies so bad? They got all our <laughs> bad bullpen guys. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Are they gonna like turn them around? Like what what are they about to do? Like I don't understand what their thought process is. <laughs> no one does. I think they're the only team that had a worse trade deadline than the Phillies. Yeah. I I mean two first place teams. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I, I can't I can't talk but so much trash, but I'm really curious about what their strategy is and if it's gonna work out. Um I know they have a really young team. They they um they use their farm system well. They yeah. They yeah. homegrown guys like like and they weeds. just recalled their top prospect again now that they made room for him with what some of their other deals. Yeah. So Jackson Holiday. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it's God. I don't know. They're one of those teams that, like you said, they use the farm system a lot. And that makes me and even though they have those years where it's like they're the worst team ever, basically. Um, <laughs> they also end up having years like this, you know, every so often where it's like, okay, I didn't see this coming necessarily. So they must, you know, have some sort of that money ball, you know, kind of ability to kind of find talent and put it in the right place. So I, and this is Philly, bro. So people go other places and do better. It just is what it is. So I mean, I would not be shocked <laughs> if these guys <laughs> started pitching lights out. Yeah, I'm sitting there like the camera will go down there and say, yo, y'all get settled. I'm telling you. you right. Know, you know? <laughs> you know, that happens too when people get somewhere else, they talk up other guys. And then, yeah. You know, if you can get somebody cheap, but they their team is also very young. And to be fair, being in Philadelphia, two deep postseason runs does give guys a lot more um, st stability and credibility in the postseason. Because right. a lot of guys that people wanted us to trade for are on – you know process teams to say something the least and haven't been in the postseason so they haven't been under pressure right. so even if the phillies we, we're tired of them we don't think that they're the best they were still in our rotation we were still using them mm -hmm. and they did see postseason play here and so they do know what it's like to have pressure yeah. and if they're playing in other cities the pressure is going to be less than it is in philadelphia yeah. fresh start you know, too like you said so What's up? That I've never seen a team that was a contender, first place team, trade away guys off the MLB roster before, like the Phillies did. To get rid of no. three guys that were on the roster is weird. Normally, you're trying to, you know, add on, and it seemed more that obviously they improved, 
because those guys weren't the best, but it was just weird to see them instead of just adding to the roster. They were kind of like subtracting and adding at the same time. Well, that keeps all the prospect babies happy. All the guys. And no, the they were still that, sad when they yeah. traded for us. <laughs> they traded <laughs> prospects that no one was worried about. Then all of a sudden, everybody was worried about and, them. And that's the crazy. I'm like, nobody even cared about those prospects. And you're still on the internet whining about it. For what? I just, I don't understand what people want. You want everything, and then you don't want to give up anything to right. get it. And then we don't get anything, and we barely give up anything. And then you cry. We didn't get anything. We didn't. Get, I just don't. <laughs> I I'm tired of going into the postseason the same way that we are. Now, last year I had the help me out with the guy with the long hair. He came in through a no hitter, his first outing here after the trade. Michael, oh, yeah, yep. Michael he Lorenzo. came in. He set Philadelphia on fire. His wife was holding the baby. She was crying. His mom was there crying, helping the, helping the wife move. It was a family affair. We were all so excited. We're like, yo, we got an extra guy that's going to come in and help us in the postseason at the deadline. No minor move, but look at this guy. He got here, and he is rocking out. He did nothing else the rest of the season. Not last a year. single thing. That was <laughs> literally, literally one shining moment. That was like, make a wish. Here you go, kid. Yeah. You. And did nothing else. Then the other night, what happened, Jason? Uh, um, we were talking about. I texted you about it. Harry, they, they put the young bull out there, and he was pitching. He didn't give up a no hitter, but he gave up four hits, no runs, pitched all nine innings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Came from Jersey. He grew up I forget, in. South I forget his name, but you're right, yeah. Going to Philadelphia games as a kid. How do we all forget his picture name? with his dad? Yeah, right. That's you forget his name because exactly what I just said. He went <laughs> yeah. out there. <laughs> and first start in Philadelphia Not in the enough. middle of the summer and did something that made us all feel good. Yep. It was so amazing. And in the instant, as soon as he was doing this interview, I'm like, why have I felt like this before? <laughs> and I remember what happened. I'm like, oh, he's going to disappear. We're never going to hear from him again. Because yep. his first outing, he's got the... He that was, wasn't his first outing, though. That was his third outing. It was his third outing. outing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was third outing. But he even said, he's like... When I went back out there, he's like, I, I felt like I was going to throw up, like I was going to cry. And I started laughing at myself. I was like, I just did, you know. And I'm like, man, the feeling, have that feeling is just magical. But again, I need something different. The Phillies are a, a chemistry team. Now, I know you're a big vibes guy, Harry. You're, you're about yeah. vibes and things like that. And they don't want to mess up the vibes. But we've had really good vibes the last two seasons in the postseason. And we get the same issue. The bats go cold. And the guys that are vibe guys all unvibe at the same yep. time. I was hoping for another starting pitcher or another relief pitcher and a bat that matters. And I know we spent a lot of money. I know we're really top heavy and I know we're loaded for bear. But when we go through spells like this, like we're doing right now, it would be nice if you had an impact guy yeah. to change that up. Somebody who comes in with a different perspective, personality, mindset. One man is not going to change. He's not going to, um, what's the thing? He's not going to start a mutiny. One new dude is not <laughs> going to start a mutiny. But he can be like, yo, bro, if, if you if you mop the floor this way, it goes a lot faster. And everybody's like, oh, damn, you know what? He's right. If we mop the floor to the right, because sometimes it takes fresh eyes. And I feel like they're all in their circle jerking each other and high-fiving <laughs> for wah-wahs, and everybody's happy with status quo. Yeah, you know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, don't you? What's, what's going to happen? That? The song's going to come back. Oh, my God. You, yeah. you tweeted that. I, I, you know, if it that. does, it's if it does, we're not winning. I mean, that's just, <laughs> it's a fact. We're not winning. The vibes. Oh, <laughs> man. See, the, they're talking about the vibes. The issue, the vibes will be off if we have these, like, bullpen issues, which hopefully these guys help out. But if we have these issues that we're not addressing going into a third hopefully extended playoff run, then all the positive vibes from even our leaders could be a little bit tense, a little bit contentious even, where you're like, man, we're trying to hold on to this vibe, but we know deep down that we didn't address the things that are going to keep us worried, which is can our bullpen hold leads and things of that nature. I feel like pitching in the playoffs is what solidifies vibes. I mean, at the end of the day, guys like Zach Wheeler being dogs, pitching extra innings, pitching on short, you know, short rest, things like that. For me, though, I feel like Wheeler has come up just short, which is weird to say, but come up just short of being like a Madison Bumgarner was in that great playoff run he had with the Giants. Like he hasn't been able to fully, fully carry us, which it shouldn't be his his job to do. 
but I feel like unless we can add somebody again, electric, it's like, what are we going into it? The same, the same thing as the last two postseasons. And this year, the Phillies and Wheeler and no, all of them, they start off really hot pitching. Obviously, that comes back down to the mean. But when you're playing better teams and you look like this, it reminds you that they are human and we yeah. are going to be playing better teams in the postseason. So the bats have to just wake up, and, and and again they will, but I don't know if I don't know if Scott's gonna Scott's, excuse me, gonna bounce back. I don't know what Castellanos does anymore. <laughs> um, but Plays he right feel good. But yes, he does. He yeah. does. He does. But he also gets hot too. He gets nuclear at certain times. Where you're like, yo, this guy is amazing. So I, I, you know, I'm just at the point now where Dombrowski, Dombrowski needed to do more for me. Mm. And now at this point, if we don't win the World Series this year, by for whatever reason, Middleton needs to spend a billion trillion dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I don't know who who is going to win. Because right now, like we said, everybody's got ups and downs. I don't <laughs> do see a clear cut winner. Like, do you see a clear cut front runner this year? I don't know. No, we have not, not yet. Really, right? I mean... And that and that's what makes me feel like we're losing these windows. Yeah. The last two World Series, we could have won one of them. Yeah, should have won one of them. Yes. I mean, what's up with the Dodgers pitching? Right, they have a lot of injuries. So I mean, it's like unless guys come back, they might not have the window. I mean, they have their, their lineups crazy. You know, they have the Dodgers, but I'm just saying they have their their peak peak form. Right, it might not be possible this year. So there could still be again, you know, a window of opportunity. Um, you know, like you said, this might be that year to be to even the end of the window. Added a starter this afternoon. No oh, man. Trade a first starter from the Tigers, Jack. And they're the they're always doing stuff, right? They're they're spending. Yeah. I mean, we might not be able to do it every year. They spend a billion dollars every year, it seems like. But I mean, that's what it takes at the end of the day. If you can't get it done and you're on the precipice, you got to just keep going. So, ride the wave, man. Bryce is here until he's not. So you got to do right. it again. I just think if you have these prospects, you should be dealing them because if you're that good yeah. at finding these prospects, just find more. There's always more prospects. <laughs> yeah. To find and develop. And if those guys are that good, then they need to be on the roster now. Yeah. Like, and honestly, prospects are my bad. Gotta find someone that is ready to help right now because the team is older and needs to win now. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the biggest thing. The team is older and they need to win right now. And prospects um, are politics, real quick, just to say, like at the end of the day, I feel like you got to be able to spin why a prospect is is valuable in a, in a franchise. It's not just about like what you see on tape. It, it, you know, I feel like the guys push again prospects all the time that are these blue chip guys that we never hear about again. So you got to be able to kind of play the game, politic it, and uh, we. I think we have the. The, the front office that does that. So just get them out of here. <laughs> get us somebody that can do something. So um, we'll circle back to baseball. Do you want to talk about uh, Eagles training camp or do you want to talk about Olympics and then Eagles and then get back to baseball? I feel like Eagles, man. I would say let's, uh, <laughs> I want to like close with more, some pride, maybe some, uh, <laughs> <laughs> some, some pride. I oh, mean, some American pride. There's some pride. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you about this pride. Let me just, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go to the Eagles when we'll come back to this. But let me tell you about this pride. Right now, America is six in the world, medals wise, right? Total? Not this morning. Hey, hey, look, I just, I, maybe in gold, gold we were slacking, I, but total. I clicked the button. And it uh, is Japan, China, Australia, France. This is total? South, United States. No, this is gold. Gold, yeah, yeah, yeah. Total, yeah, America is, we're, we're, we're number one. Well, for, for both basketball teams, we get what, one, two, three, four, how many? <laughs> that's, like, that's about 40 yeah. gold medals right there. Yeah, yeah. And the track stuff hasn't started yet. Yeah, right? I was going to say, that's track, we, we got that. Gold medals, too. Yeah, We've been getting beat in the swimming. I mean, like it's been all real competitive, but no, nah, I mean, we already started talking about the Olympics. Let me let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> that easy, distracted them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just saying. I'm like, man, we ain't, we ain't got no, we ain't got no gold out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, with the, uh, <laughs> the bronze. Hey, you know, you know, ladies' we, gymnastics team won it. They yeah, got yeah. that gold exactly because you know how we are. We're Americans out here. It, it's gold or nothing. Out That's just because we they getting paid like 30k per gold. I saw like Taiwan's <laughs> getting like 700k per gold. Like I mean. <laughs> You said that, uh, with, you know, Shannon and uh, Ocho out there throwing around money, though. Uh, did you see that? No, what are you talking about? So, Shannon Sharp and Ocho said that anybody who wins gold, they're going to give them an extra $25,000. Hey. Anybody, they're not giving LeBron, they're not giving LeBron. <laughs> no, they, well, I mean, they didn't say that, yeah, they, they about all the, all the, like, like the whatever, and then they said. Anybody who breaks a world record, they're going to get $50,000 too. 
What? Uh, 50K? They should give him a, a mil for a world, world record. What are you talking about? It's two black dudes with a podcast. <laughs> they're not, not going to do anything, but I'm just saying they should at least say it a mil. They should have said not, it. Oh, no, no, no. When yeah. when they say stuff like that, they're going to pay that money. They're going to be right. with Medecki yeah. a bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ocho Cinco is, is actually notorious for that kind of stuff. Like when he yeah. makes a bet or whatever, he pays up his bet. Like, um, it, so it, yeah. And not for nothing, uh, tax write off, too. You know what I mean? They, and they know about hey, the tax write off. Gift. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, oh, you know, probably, you're talking about it being a million. It, it might end up being a million by the time they get done. Uh, but yeah, gold. And uh, if, if you break a world record, they're going to give you 50 grand. So good way to guarantee you get some of those guests too when the names are still you know yeah. hot. like sponsored like, by DraftKings. Like, yeah. like 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 I said, that's that's ta- that's a tax write off. Yeah, you, know, you can't you can't say a million. America went too much to get out a million per person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> broke. Then that. They, they, I, I mean, I don't care what that NFL uh, money look like. I don't care what the TV money look like. They ain't they ain't got it like that. I put it mm. that way. Uncle uh, uh, ain't got it like that. I know. Okay, <laughs> Yeah, I do a fake jewelry on, but I know he ain't got it like that. You say something like that, and then one of those big countries boycotts the Olympics. You're like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't just say give it to America. Why watch these brothers go broke? Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, it, um, anyway, so um, the Eagles are back in training camp. Uh, I ditched you guys last week because mm-hmm. – was dying inside and I was, was, was on the injured list. Hair was growing a mustache. <laughs> yeah, or I wasn't ready. It wasn't ready yet. And so, um, but are you excited about training camp and everything you've been seeing, Harry? Are you happy? I mean, I'm I'm relatively happy. I don't, the injuries are, with the O line are a little bit. You know, you don't want to see that. But I mean, I hate. They're not career. They're not season ending. You know what I mean? Right now, so we have, we're, we're picking up some guys. I saw we signed. I forget is some O lineman today to kind of replace and buffer Nick that. Gates. Nick Gates, yeah. So, um, you know, Cooper DeGene also hasn't had a snap yet, which is a little bit, you know, frustrating. I want to see him get out there and figure out where where his, where his fit is, right? We want to know, is he a safety, is he a corner? Um, but ultimately, I feel like, you know, it's it's early and I'm not <laughs> – nothing nothing to be upset about right now. So I'm excited <laughs> that the season's, you know, getting closer. What do you guys – I see so – I don't even know what, <laughs> what you're thinking about right now. Is not a corner. Oh. <laughs> We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> play in DB. Oh, got <laughs> uh, he looks like a safety to me. <laughs> I mean, hey, then get him out there. Get him some snaps. That's all. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm joking because well, I'm not joking, but um, <laughs> Quentin, Quinion Mitchell. Yes. He has been – today was his first day that he got to yeah. take slot, um, reps. slot reps. And so they have him at nickel, and he's the number one pick. So that's why I'm just talking about that. Like, right. if there – if Unless he flashes, like he flashed today, apparently. Um, the reports came out today that he was going one on one with AJ Brown. Yeah. He was talking how much he loved the competition and and pushing him. And he made he made he had an interception. He broke up a lot of plays. You know, apparently Jalen stopped throwing his way because he was covering mm. so well. So all those things are good yeah. indicators that hopefully, again, if he gets in the, in the nickel situation or whatever he gets into, he can evolve and get into that number one spot. So then, my my joking is about. Cooper Jean, he's got to overcome him or wait till Slay also goes down. And then he's got to go against Ringo and all the other guys yeah. that are still trying to go. So that's that's my point about that. Like it's yeah. it's a it's a hard sled to get to. Um I mean after from day one at the end of the day, I think he's just a football player and he's an athlete and he has yeah, good yeah, in, instincts. So I just want to see him get out there because he might be again that Tyron Mathieu kind of honey badger. Like, is he just uh plug him in there and let him go figure out where the ball's gonna be? I mean, yeah. that might be what he is. He might he might be a heat seeking missile. He also might be um, a guy that you throw in there with certain teams that like to have um, three and four wide receivers, and you want a guy that could yeah. cover for cover. I mean, not for nothing. We we've joked about it all off season. They've got ninety two cornerbacks. Right <laughs> yeah, <now. laughs> so literally they could put them all out there in the field if you just wanted <laughs> speed. First day. Um, Hey, they so, cut one today, though. Yeah, I did see that too. <laughs> so they to cut, add the center, they cut Mario Goodrich today to add the backup center that okay. they brought in since Tyler Steen's hurt. So yeah. another, and whoever else they have backing up at center, I guess they don't like too much right now. Yeah. Well, again, the, the lineman thing, they're taking all that super easy, as it were. Um, did you see the video clip of Huff getting handled by Lane Johnson? Yeah, it was a good rep for both of them. I'm not really worried about that. Lane Johnson handles just about damn near everybody. Well, yeah. it, it cracked right, me right. up because when people were just sitting there like, so let's preface this. Let me backtrack a little bit. 
uh, Vic Fangio said that Huff can't play the run, and uh, he just can't play the run. Which Vic, might be true. We knew that. Vic Fangio <laughs> is what I want in a defense. Yeah. <laughs> he's almost damn near what I want in a head coach. So he's basically like, you suck, you suck, you're cool, you're trash, you might be something. And then you hear Nick, yeah, well, Huff's just out there huh, getting in the run. <laughs> I was like, yo, the defense coordinator just said he's trash, yeah? Right. <laughs> and you out here talking about all the good stuff he did. Like, I, That's the thing that cracks me up about Nick. Like, I understand somebody's got to be like the, the all-purpose and all guy. But when another man's telling you hard facts trying to get you in line, Yo, that's the kind of tone you got to maintain. I don't need the mom and dad in the house or whichever one you want to say is the soft one, mom or dad, whatever it is, where it's like, oh, well, go talk to your mom about that or go talk to your dad <laughs> about that. Like, nah, bro, stop fucking throwing cookies up against the wall. Both of us are out here telling you stop throwing right. cookies up against yeah. the wall. Yeah, just stop. So uh, that that's an interesting dynamic when I hear those conversations come out. But it cracks me up because I'm like, Lane Johnson, I, do you know who Nick? Do you know who Nick Bosa is? Do you know the both brothers are? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Von Miller. Have you seen Von Miller? <laughs> They're potential defensive players of the yeah. year. He makes them cry. Yeah, like they sit on the sideline and cry. Like I'm not. Yeah. That's not hyperbole. That's not no. a joke. Even when they win, they're not happy because yeah. they work against Lane Johnson all day. So no huff. It's never going to look good against Lane Johnson. <laughs> Lane Johnson could be retired and come back out and whoop Huff's ass. Like, I, I believe that with my heart. So I, it's, a, it's just funny yeah. how people interpret things. I, I say when Jalen's out there throwing 85% of his passes, and I'm like, well, what's the defense doing then? Right. When the offense looks so good because the offense is stacked, now it's just making me think, well, how bad is the defense? Hmm. Then you have to remind yourself, well, the guy in the red shirt, you're not allowed to touch him. No. Right, so the sack thing when you hear like Nolan Smith had two back to back sacks, he got somewhere in the vicinity and it was like, brruh, 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 brruh. <laughs> like yeah, shut it down. You know what I mean? So the defense <laughs> doesn't even get the hunt or play the way they want to play and pin their ears back. That's why preseason games still have value, even though they're they're about to take one more preseason game away and add another regular season game. So you're going to get even less time to prove yourself when you're young. But I, I just I just like Vic Fangio. I like his demeanor. I like his style. I like the curmudgeonness. I like that even if maybe he's being harsh, the player should take it as I've got to do better. I'm not yeah. going to let this guy dog walk me and talk about me like that. I'm going to go out there and prove myself. Um, Bradbury, uh, Harry, did you know <laughs> he is now a safety? Yes, I did know. Jason, did you know? I did, man. That guy sounded like a total pro in that press conference, didn't he? He 100% did. He needs to keep that job. That's why. Who, yeah. who, well, so when they said whose idea was it, he said it was my idea. I think it was Howie's idea. Because Vic Fangio, here's what I'm telling you. Vic Fangio said, uh, when the last bitch-ass corner you heard turned into a good safety? I don't know. <laughs> you know one? Who, name one. Been a bunch name of one. Huh? Corners that turned into good safety. Yeah. Rod Woodson, Charles Rod, Woodson. Yeah, I was going to Charles Matt, Woodson. Tyron Matthew was a corner at first. Those guys all moved to safety and were very good. You, oh, you talk about some goats. Yeah, well, I was like, I said, that's only a few that we said. <laughs> that was only a few guys. Yeah, yeah. When's the last time? I, yeah, yeah. When's the last time? And how, when's the last time a Woodson played football? <laughs> Malcolm Jenkins was a corner, moved to safety. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins is a trash fan. I hate him. And he, thank you for the suit. <laughs> Being in a person, I don't recognize him. But I'm just saying. When he said it, Cooper DeGene, <laughs> Cooper DeGene, <laughs> Cooper DeGene. <laughs> the safety trying to be a corner. <laughs> yeah, going back to safety <laughs> and he's gonna have success. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's funny because when he said that, I'm like, golly. Then you hear Bradbury, like you said, Jason, total pro. It was my decision. Um, I'm just trying to be a benefit to the team. Do I need to do all? He said all the right things. And he was like, if they cut me, they cut me. Whatever. Yeah. I'm still here. And so nice. I'm sure Howie said something like, hey, if you can make yourself available for other positions because you're not going to take up as much time from these young guys we got coming in here that are going to have that position because you're going to take reps from them, you know, maybe you should try this. And if there's injuries in the in the um, pre preseason, you know, I'll try and move you somewhere yeah. and get you somewhere. And he was like, oh, you know what? That's cool. That's cool. So let me go and show and prove and stay on team because they don't want to cut him because they don't want to just pay him and lose him for nothing. And he doesn't want to just get cut left in the wind either because then he's not going to get that money. 
So I, I believe it's a it's a that's a team effort thing to try and keep mm-hmm. it stretched around Definitely. as long as possible. Um, and I do believe Howie's involved with that because Howie does those kind of things. It's it's the same thing when somebody says to me that um, who's the linebacker that we got from Georgia, the Kobe Dean. When people said the Kobe Dean's not going to make the team, and I'm like, are you on crack cocaine? <laughs> Do you not know who Howie Roseman is? Do you know how long Whiteside was on this team? Yeah. Getting yeah. getting reps in game <laughs> in NFL games. Why? Yeah. Because Howie drafted him. He will, he didn't let him go until he had to. Right. Yeah. So trust you me, that bulldog's gonna be out there. Not gonna start. But no, be. no, no, he'll be there. And uh hopefully this is the first year he can stay healthy and show what he can do. Cause this is the last year for him. Yeah. Um yeah. His, his contract will be taking care of itself if he's not doing anything. Um, White on defense has come out and said, I am here to fill up half the glass. And I, Accountability. I, te- I texted <laughs> uh, Jalen. I texted A.J. Brown, who, oh, my goodness, they were hanging out today after practice, and Jalen's hanging out with A.J.'s family and Weird. his children. I mean, <laughs> what else do godfathers do? <laughs> I mean, it's like they're it, boys or something. It, it, like they're huh. friends. Weird. It's so weird. And crazy. It's like, I don't know. It it cracks me up. Like, Jason, you got a son. I'm not his godfather, but I'll take that boy somewhere and go hang out. We'll yeah. go do something because we like family. You know what I mean? So it, it's like, oh, they're right. like, even if they are arguing, they were friends before they both got here. Mm-hmm. So whatever you think is going on, like, have you never had a friend? Have you never had a disagreement at a job with somebody who's a friend? Right. You're still cool. Matter of fact, we talk about fuck the boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, this issue has just always been so silly to me. Matter of fact, oh, yeah. they, were, they were scheming together. AJ's yeah. like, yeah, me and Jalen just went rogue because we were like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's not, that's on us. That's how close they are. So I don't, I never understood why people were like, oh, they're beefing. I'm like, these dudes started the mutiny. Remember, I told you one dude. Yeah, came? right. <laughs> you dude, that that that's a mutiny starter right there. When you got two of uh, the lines on deck. Hey, yeah. dog, we ain't even. You know what I mean, we gonna go over here and do this. So the people who say that stuff don't understand what it's like to be a competitor. That's why where you can yeah. be best with somebody, but when you're on the field, all that shit is gone when you're competing, man. You just want to be the best, and if that person's messing up, you're gonna let them know, especially if it's your friend. The people yeah. who say that stuff, I love personally, but they also speak. Four hours a day, every day in a mm-hmm. cycle with nothing to talk about, and they just want to create drama because they themselves have nothing else to talk about. Right. Yeah. And I get that. Yo, real quick, the Huff thing, I wanted to uh, interrupt you when you were talking about it. How annoying must it be when the coach is like, man, you suck. You're not even doing good. And you're doing <laughs> like, this guy's the best. Are you kidding? I can't get around him. Like, just like yeah, he's a tier one be- lineman ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> literally. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Jake. So it's, it's funny because. That again, like I said, that could be motivation, right? Like that, Vic. That might be Vic's thing, yeah. but right. at the same time, too, a lot of people are saying that uh, Davis has uh, come in in his best shape ever. Cut his hair, oh, cut oh, his wow. haircut. <laughs> um, you know that 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 might add to the whole him weighing less. <laughs> you know, I mean, he probably lost slightly. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, uh, anything to sweat a little bit less, man. I'm sure he's. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's hot <laughs> out there. He needs to keep that sweat beat up. Yeah. Well, yeah. Apparently, everybody's, you know, he came in shape, but he came in shape last year. Apparently, he's even in better shape this year, which is good. I saw something that was absolutely disturbing. And, and football season's coming up, and real sports is coming up. And not that baseball isn't real sport, not that the Olympics aren't real sport, but you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll start keeping stats and things, but I saw something that was just diabolical. The Georgia Bulldogs college football team. Graduates a forty-one percent rate. Ooh, they are the lowest in the top-ranking colleges, lowest by twenty-one percent. Damn, the next <laughs> lowest school graduates at like sixty-one percent. Right, damn. And I'm like, what? And then on top of that, they have thirty-two incidences of uh, criminal activity or off-campus misconduct. Half of them are streetcar races, which is the situation that got Jalen Carter, Jaylen Carter, Jaylen Carter yeah. that death run. And I'm like, so somebody died, and they still got these kids out here racing Hellcats and doing yeah. stuff with all this NIL money? What the hell? How is that possible? 
How is that possible? How much? How much of the percentage of the graduation rate has to do with them going all being drafted to the NFL and <laughs> and not going back to okay, college? That, that might help it, but that I mean, might. But that's, that's good. You still twenty percent. That, that you still would be Alabama, last or second to last. Uh, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. yeah. You're right. High. Alabama was like eighty something. So I, yeah, you're right. right. I, I was about to say like, well, shoot, who's getting drafted? Alabama's high. LSU is in the uh, 70s. Yeah, but Saban, Saban makes those boys get their degree, too. You know what I mean? He's that's a, that's part of the point of what Not I'm Kirby, saying. though. Not Kirby. Kirby, don't. Kirby, nope. Kirby out here thugging and bugging. He's he don't like, give a fuck. Know Kirby like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mama robbed the bank one time. Hey, yeah, you were not kind of dog. Yeah, you, you, a, you a dog. You a, you a real dog. bulldog. <laughs> No, let me tell you something. Well, Georgia high, dog. Hey, high school, high school. I got this report right here. It says you was arrested seven times. Okay, you a fighter. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Hopefully, we give it up after five or six. Of this. <laughs> you can't be real. I'm gonna get you. You just start adjusting those majors, those best <laughs> pick. You know, like, hey man, I want to be an engineer. It's like communications, it is. Right. Look, 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 look. I'm, I'm telling you one thing. Criminology was the easiest class. That's the class all the football kids <laughs> took at Penn. I'm just telling you, that was literally number one class they took because to get a, to get an A. Look, so I'm saying, look, <laughs> your cousin's in jail. You know what I mean? Doing a ten to twelve. Your uncle's out there doing a bid for fifteen to twenty. You come to us, criminology. You know what I mean? You might get it. You get them out. Get them. The okay. Georgia <laughs> governor's pardoned them for sure. If you're on the dogs, <laughs> you get that pardon. No, no, so you ain't gonna be no lawyer, son. You gonna make it to the NFL. You gotta hire a lawyer. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Uh, so, yeah. I just wanted to bring that up because that, that stat was crazy to me. I'm like, oh, gosh. Um, so it takes to be fair, though. I mean, now that Saban's gone, I guess not. But, uh. Harry, I'm kicking you off. Come back. Um. Yeah. Also, by the way, we got to start calling Nolan Smith. It's Nolan Smith plus 10 pounds. That's how we got to refer to him for the preseason. Oh, uh, because he gained Because he, he gained a little bit of muscle. Yeah, well, that's, that's why he got his two sacks back to back. And that, he's... Told you before, that's the jersey I most want to buy, but I'm like, I, I can't just put money out for that. I just can't do it. So, not yet, anyway. Mm -hmm. You're good. You're good. I know I, my comment was boring. I can't. I can't <laughs> put a. I can't get a jersey out for any. Oh, sorry, Harry. <laughs> I can't get a jersey out for any of these Georgia dogs yet. That's the sad part, right? right. Carter is the one where you feel like, pretty sure about. Yeah. Carter. Carter has a chance if he wants to be something and someone this is the year to do it yeah there's no aaron donald there's no fletcher cox right he should be in the top five d tackles by the end of the yes season. and and if he's not his rankings should still be so high because he's getting doubled and triple teamed yeah that whoever's next to him should be feasting right right if he's not if he's not clogged up because they're going to start him off one-on-one -on -one until he starts really wrecking shop like he was last year. Last yeah. year he was wrecking shop, and he started getting doubled, and then he, but then he broke down. Um, it just seemed like he got ran out of gas a little bit. You know what I mean? But you're never yeah. cool. Um, And it, he had that emotional game where they were chirping at him, and he let him get to him uh, against the Buffalo Bills. But again, that was late in the season, too. The, that Bills game got to him. And the um, team collapsed, obviously, too. That's yeah, yeah, helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Team <laughs> collapsed. But I'm talking about his play in general because right. he was just – a force so in yeah. that game he was out there crying he was just losing it um it, it does take a lot to like reel yourself back in mm -hmm. but it, it, it it's wild to me because we always you know we talk trash and everybody talks trash and i i'm not even averse to i've i've said some vile violent things to people but like when you talk about like the, his friend that died and passed away right and that's just like up. that's like when you go after somebody's mom and you know their mom died right like you say mm -hmm. like ah that's why Ooh. your mom said not like F your mom, whatever you're like, oh my mom's dead. Oh, my bad. Or at that point, I don't care. Right. But when you know that somebody has lost somebody and you're talking about that and you put that on somebody, and I got a helmet on and I can't just choke you out and kill you, like, dude, I'm a I, that dude's a grizzly bear. <laughs> and oh, he's yeah. like, I can't even kill this man in front of me like I want right. to. <laughs> I want to put these paws on this guy. And he kept his composure. That's why when they pulled him out, he's on the side like, yo, let me bang it there, coach. <laughs> oh, my God, coach, I kill him for you. I swear to God. <laughs> he was upset. Because yeah. in the moment, we were all like, yo, what? He, this dude is unhinged right now. Mm -hmm. It looks so wild in the moment. But when you hear like what was said, I'm like, oh, okay. And then they ended up yeah. losing that game. And you saw those same kind of grown men crying because fans were making fun of them. 
And then they said that right. the fans were threatening their lo- their wives and their children. Bro, they're on the 50 yard line in the front row. They're nowhere near your family. They don't even know what your family looks like. Right, right. <laughs> and and apparently they didn't say it because everything's on videotape. So yeah. you're you lost it over something less important or or less vile per se. Right. So I, I hope that he does what we all expect him to do. I I I I want for him to make a name for himself in this league. I want for him to be in the top of fear. Because we, we mentioned the Bosa boys, but nobody's afraid of them. People just don't like them. Right. People respect them. You know what I mean? They respect yeah. them, but a lot, a lot of people don't like the Bosas. Nobody yeah. likes the no, Bosa. No, 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 no. scared of Nick Bosa. They're not I really feel like Nick, yeah, Bosa. Nick, Nick's personality is a little bit more dry humor. I feel like he's got more positivity around him than Joey's an idiot. I feel like, you know, that the, his run-ins with the fans and stuff like that, like he just looks like a fool, but. Yeah. Philly trying to pull some late-inning magic. Mm. So first and third. Two outs with Schwarber up. Schwarber up. Schwarber Go ahead. Let's go ahead and walk this out. Schwarber's fitting. Schwarber Bumbalaya. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. See, Jason, I'm in the middle of a show. You didn't got me all, and I'm trying to watch the show. Was it wasn't my yeah. phone. It was. I was going to say, but you're right about Jalen Carter, though, just real quick. Like, that, this is the beginning of that potential Aaron Donald type of career. You have to, you know, 10, 10 years, 10 flawless years. Like, obviously, that's not going to happen necessarily. But, I mean, this is – start the run now. Be be the best now. Like, that's nice. – that's usually D tackles take year three when they normally break out. That's the hope Jordan Davis does, but hopefully Carter's good enough to get there in year two. I mean, yeah, his grades last year, I feel like they were, you know, not even just compared to the the rookies. I mean, against any, yeah. compared to anybody, he was that that guy for the beginning of the year. So that, that's what I was about to say. Mm-hmm. Carter better do it today. Yeah, yeah. he was Carter already. There, there's a difference between, dang, I, I, I don't want to even be disrespectful, but like, gosh. Who, who would you if you had to have like a tandem of two guys? I can't even think of two guys that are on the line together that are like that that have that kind of potential at that young age. Right. Yeah. There's not many in the league that have possess that type of potential. No. No, there's not. So they they could do something special. Oh yeah. They could be something special. Absolutely. Because um, Fletcher with his up and down year, it always made me angry because as he got older, he started getting mad because he's not having the same kind of push. But the one year he was injured, the other year, you go and look at it, he was getting double teamed and chipped right oh, yeah. all the time. And it wasn't good because the rest of the team wasn't excelling around him. Now, when you go and look at it, like the year they went to the Super Bowl and the year before that, and we're racking up 17 sacks, you're like, oh, because Fletcher's getting double teamed and these other guys are taking advantage of the yeah, mismatch. Yeah. On that. yeah, and that and that's what you want. Like I said, if Carter is not just being the bear breaking down the line, then somebody else – Needs to be capitalizing on those moments. The Nolan mm-hmm. Smiths, the uh, Jordan Davises, the Huffs. Huff, again, if you can't stop the run, guess what? When you get a lead and you get up, they're going to finish it with anyway. sex, right? Yeah, they're going to be passing anyway. So, I mean, that's when you get your time to shine. That's when you get your time to roll. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, training camp. And the injuries don't even yeah. bother me right now because I feel like any kind of reason they can give you to sit down, Nick is going to give you that sit down. Like, yeah. so I don't know how significant injuries are right now, to be honest with you, or what's going on with that. So um, I take that with a grain of salt. Hey, they're using motion now, right? All the time. They use motion, and apparently the defense is struggling with it. Well, that's what that's all you want. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I don't want our defense to struggle against motion. <laughs> I saw something that said that the defense is doing a little bit better uh, in their the more recent sessions. So, <laughs> but I mean, hopefully, Fangio, you said Fangio, like him holding him speaking on about Huff like that. I mean, I feel I take it more as like him trying to instill pride in in the in the defense, like a little bit. Just his his vibe, the vibe gives me that. Obviously, the words can be you know construed, but I mean, like that's the sense I get. And he knows they're a good. Uh, our offense is stacked, so he just wants our guys to feel like instead of thinking, oh, our offense is stacked, like of course we're getting <laughs> we're getting we're getting handled in practice. Just have some pride and be like, you know what? Fuck that. Like we're gonna we're gonna be good too. So that's that's the vibe I'm getting right now. So I'm excited for sure about the defense. We'll see what happens, but I'm I'm feeling good. Yeah, because the defense definitely lost that swagger last year. They yeah. had nothing last year as far as attitude wise or anything. Yeah, Vic's bring, Vic's bringing it. Woo! Lost that swagger, boy. <laughs> Hey, they put that thing in a freezer. Oh my god! <laughs> this guy got locked up like freezer, a freezer, and then they ball shot ball. that shit into space. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god! Into the sun. <laughs> um, so uh, before we move to the Olympics, the um, you guys watching the Hard Knocks? 
The Giants one? The Giants. Yeah, I've been watching it. Well, Harry, if you, you haven't seen it, it's okay. But it, I'm not caught up, but I've been, I've been watching the clips. It's just, it just makes me happy. Oh, yeah. It, really, yeah. <laughs> it makes me so happy knowing how terrible the team is and what they're doing and what they've got going on. Because why? Why are you here? Why the Giants seem so unorganized in everything they do. All their projections were wrong, you know, for salaries, for free agents. They just, they fumbled the Saquon thing super mm-hmm. bad. Their draft stuff seemed clunky when they were interviewing guys. It just seemed like a mess all over the place. I mean, haven't they been the last few years, like, a team that is like, laughable but then has, like, these stretches of overperforming and you're like, do they have something to build around here? And then they just make all the wrong <laughs> decisions to, like, kind of enhance what they have and they just blow it again. So it's like they could have been a competitive team over the last few years if they made, you know, different decisions. That, uh, I mean, basically all the decisions they made, um, you know, but the team that they had, you know, seemed like one that, to build around and now it's just, like, falling apart. They paid a bad quarterback, and you just can't yeah. do that. If your yeah. quarterback not proven, you just can't pay that guy. You're right. They paid him enough that they can get out of it, so that, that's the thing. I, 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 I know you don't like him, but I do like their coach. Their coach has yeah, helped he, them o- uh, overcome a lot of missteps because as embarrassing as they are and as terrible as they look, isn't it crazy that the Washington Commanders are worse than them? That's what yes. I'm saying, right? That's what I'm like, saying. Like, Holy shnike. <laughs> it is a two-horse race between us and the Cowboys. And uh, just touching the Cowboys and their trash panda lifestyle, um, we'll talk about obviously more as the season gets closer. But have you heard Jerry Jones talk about the team? He's all in. Yeah, except mm. he's not. And I when mean, he rambled about being all in, it basically came off to something about having sex by himself when he was younger, <laughs> when he used to play. And sometimes you need to know when to get off, but not get off. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so he hasn't paid Dak. He hasn't paid CD. He hasn't paid Micah. And he's like, I'm all in because they're all in and we're all here and they're all there. And I'm like, yeah, but you haven't kept anybody happy. Dak Prescott at the end of the season, no matter what, is going to walk and be a free agent. Oh yeah, Which means he's unrestricted for a tag. He's unrestricted for trade. Nothing Jerry can do. And if I was him, I'd walk away to a Minnesota or somewhere else where I can get paid. Vegas. Vegas, no. $20 guaranteed and have much less stress on my life. And I don't have to be America's team. I listen to the owner. Mm-hmm. And the Cowboys will be dead in the water because they're going to win 12 games. They're not going to get a high draft pick. Right. And uh, then they're going to have to pay CD Lamb. And then you're like, well, I'm paying you for what now? Because I don't have a quarterback to throw you the ball. I don't know if you're good enough to do rock like you are with a, with a with a young guy. And then I'm looking at Michael Parsons. Well, why should I pay you? I go draft another one of you because one thing Jerry has done has been drafting. The last 10, 12 years, he does pick up players left and right, and yeah. they develop into something. I will give him that. He's missed on the head coach. He's missing on the quarterback. He's missing on balls. But on players, he seems to have a good sense of what he needs to get done there. And so – it's just crazy to think that that whole thing that's never won anything, not even won, because, you know, we really won the Super Bowl. I'm not going to act crazy. But they haven't even gotten to a conference finals in 30 years. And he's about to let it all melt down because why well, pay Dak again? And Dak's got the option, too. Right. Even if he wants to match with somebody else paying. If I was Dak, I wouldn't stay in Dallas. No, no. He hasn't been bad. You talk about Jerry, like, they're not paying him, and he doesn't give doesn't give them the support they, like, that they could uh... – you know, feel good about. He's not like speaking about them in, in positive ways. He's always, uh, I mean, not even like sneak diss and Dak. He's just straight up diss and Dak all the time. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Dak would probably be like, you know what, you you sign the check that I want. Like, I don't care. That's fine. You can say whatever the fuck you want. But <laughs> you're doing both. Like, Dak is ready to leave a hundred percent. Yeah. So it's and the fans, I'm sure, disrespect him too. Just to say that. Right. You look at the Eagles, who give you the map of how to sign guys, get it done early, pay the cash up front, and then it creates all this salary cap for you. And instead, the Eagle or the Cowboys do the opposite. They wait, 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 wait until the market just goes up, up, up. And then they're <laughs> one of the lowest teams as far as paying out cash to players like that. They don't do like Jeff Lurie does. I don't know if Jerry pretends he's poor. Like, I don't know what it is because you know he's damn well not poor. No. He decides to not pay those guys up front and it just costs them real bad. I feel like it's, yeah. is this is some weird old school, like senile, like, like, like just, I don't know, like negotiation tactics. Like, he's trying to, like, He's doing some 70s shit. Like, that doesn't work now, bro. Yeah, well, you know, it, 
I'm not going to get into that right now. <laughs> some, some 70s, and I mean by 70s, I mean 1870s. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Stuff there. That's exactly. my, whole, my mule kind of 70s. I mean, you're right. But, um, uh, it sucks to be them. They do mismanage and handle the cap. Um, Howie not only pays people early, he pays them in a way that's like, look, bro, I'm going to give you this to you now, and I'm not even going to cause no problems for you. Right. Like, take this money. Good. They've, they've got a program, which I believe um, they, they always have it for every rookie. When you come in, they try to tell you how to be uh, financially responsible and what to do with your money and this and that. But the Eagles and this new regime of players in general, but the Eagles especially, live so modestly. Like they're making fun of Justin Jefferson. Like, oh, you live in a, a two room condo. Right. And he's like, I live by myself. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't got a girl. I got a dog. Yeah. I got a personal chef. Like, what? Why? I didn't grow up living in no mansion. Why am I going to go buy M- McMansion for what? Oh, because I got $100 million. That makes no, I'm sorry. Like, I bet I'm, you he buys a mansion now that he's got that big contract. Though. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, even, like, even he said, he was like, just to stash it. I mean, he was like, he's like, yeah, I got the money now. He's like, I bought my mom a house. Like, I, you know, mm-hmm. like, I don't. Again, now if he had a girl and she was like, "Yo, we need a crib, we need a baby, we need," that's when you start doing all that extra stuff. Yeah. But even that, I mean, even Smitty, bro, Smitty's house, like with his family, it's a that's very okay. modest he, he house. In a regular house in Sickerville, yeah. like a lot of these guys are living in a four bedroom, three bath, full basement. Yep. Four hundred thousand dollar house, and they're chilling. Um, uh, Lane, not Lane, Dickerson. Dickerson's got like. Uh, he's got like a good two acres of property. Yeah, he's got the property. Though. Yeah, he's got property. <laughs> he's got a property. But I mean, his house is less than a million dollar home. Yeah. And he, he's a hundred million dollar player. Like a, a lot of these guys now aren't doing that. And I mean, look at Castellanos. He went out there and got that fake McMansion from Ben Simmons. The only reason he probably bought that is because it was on a discount. Yeah. yeah. He should have <laughs> that haunted house. No, he yeah, shouldn't have sure. a horse. And I don't mean horse. Get it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I would have got out of that house the second I couldn't hit. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a bad juju. In there, yeah. sure. You hear that, Kate? He got out of that house as he couldn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you oh. going. That's how you going on Georgia. He a dog. That's for that. Go for it. If I came, I, I, was, I said to say the whole house is a whole house. Like, I know you telling me if you can't hit, you quit. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> that's what it is. Nah, that's what I heard anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, back, back to these Olympic medals. America has got a whole bunch of silver and brizons. Yep. They, like, it's always how it is, though. It's always how it is. We're going to start racking it up. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so did you guys know that uh, Simone Biles, uh, her hair isn't always pushed down perfectly after she does 42 backflips and springs off the mat? <laughs> Apparently, this is a big deal that her hair is messy, and I'm like, what, what? I mean, <laughs> this is what social media has come to like, the, just people sitting at home. I love the disrespect she needs to do her hair. I'm like, oh you know why God. that is. Oh, I do God. know why, that you is. know why that is. And I, and I went Jeez. and looked, I obviously went and looked, and I'm like, unless you were a gymnast in the 80s where you where they all had that boy bob short haircut yeah, yeah. and they so moved they like this they were just like flipping. dancing they weren't flipping they were just barely yeah, yeah. <laughs> any other girl I, I saw ling lings with their hair all fluffed out <laughs> and, and <laughs> straight as soft as hair i'm like all those brazilians they had the, they, their hair was I'm i mean like, it, you like, know. why are we talking about this girl's hair she just jumped over a shack on a free base, <laughs> back double flip, handstand, quadruple pump dip. Hit the ground hard enough to go 15 feet in the air off the, off the I mean, ground. Like, I don't, I don't care about her hair, bro. Like I'm She's sorry. She's the goat, so Crazy. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um. But speaking of goats, LeBron James is the goat. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. Captain America. Captain America. America. <laughs> Hey, look, 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 don't lose. Look, you, see that, you see that video of Booker of him filming him in the rain? He's just like, yeah. I'm fearless, I'm fearless yeah. Captain America. He's like, he knows, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He what he's doing. <laughs> Standing in the rain, staring straight ahead, not even. I, I didn't make this video, and I, I'm not even going to send it to you. But like, somebody put a video up, and it's like, well, Michael Jordan, the last time they went and won the gold or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, oh. Because people were saying, like, Michael Jordan's most recognizable face in the world, or blah, blah, blah. Which, you know, because shoes are marketing brand, whatever. Definitely like, back yeah, then. I mean, maybe. Like, I yeah, yeah. Even back then. They're like, question. They're like yeah. Michael Jordan 
and it was funny because it just got Michael Jordan just getting pictures like fans, like everybody, like fans just take one take pictures of Michael Jordan, which is normal. Yeah. Then they're like, okay, so fans wanted to see Michael Jordan. Other athletes are taking pictures of LeBron James, like they're gold medalists. Oh my god! They didn't have social media back then. They weren't posting selfies and shit. Get out of here! But no, in '92, that was happening for but, Jordan too. But, but One yeah, yeah. other way on that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, that's my point. Like, because you can find the pictures of Jordan with all the fans. Like every again, it's like it's it's happening now. You see Michael Jordan now. You take a picture with Michael Jordan. He was just saying he's like actual Olympians, like from other countries, are just sitting there. With, because they want to get LeBron in the back because yeah. they want to have a picture of LeBron. Yeah, yeah, and he's I, that type of guy for sure. And not for nothing, it's also because he's nicer. Like, I, I you know, I'll give And it's that. also he's old and it's his last one. I mean, it's LeBron. You know, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> is, is it his last one? The Olympics right. are four years away, bro. <laughs> is it his last one? Let me start four years. Right. I don't think he's gonna be good enough in four years, bro. You said you said you said it like it was the thorn. cliff is coming. The cliff is coming. <laughs> when he's forty-four, the cliff is coming. I, and I promise we're gonna talk about other things besides basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can touch on it, but I was watching it with my daughter. She's like, "Oh, can we watch the game?" I was like, "Yeah." So like, oh, again, the other games were the prelim games. I don't care about them. Yeah. So we're watching it, and she's just like, "Now this is a child. She's a seventeen-year-old yeah, yeah, yeah. female girl in the sports, but she's like." What's wrong with Joel Embiid? And I'm like, well, that's the that's the burning question, right? FIBA. <laughs> Not in shape. He just, you know, he needs to warm up in the games, and yeah. the game is too fast for him. Like, yeah, he needs to play with a certain kind of pace. He needs to to be at the the top of the key, and all the things that people complain about Joel Embiid. But that's why also because he's not in shape. Shorter court, yeah. There's a lot of differences, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. When he when he comes out of the game, she instantly says, "Yo." I saw a video that said LeBron James is on steroids. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's like, I mean. well, I'm looking at him. And she's like, if he's on steroids, I want to know why everyone else is not on steroids. Because if he if he's on steroids and he's 40 and looks like that, everybody else who's 24, 28 should be three times as fast as him, right? And I'm like, you know what? That's a good point from a novice mindset she's like <laughs> she's like i want to be on that juice she's like what kind of juice he got? of course i can get lebron's juice I yeah get a baseball and i want to run like a dango she's like he just looks faster and stronger than everybody's like he is faster like that yes. serbian did wasn't Jokic, whatever their other center was especially against yeah if he booked competition and, and <laughs> like back down lebron and he went forward yeah, i'm yeah. like that's a seven foot two center trying to like muscle lebron right like, right I'm sorry, you're LeBron. I'll 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 go back over here. I'm that's sorry. the that's the funny goofiness of the Olympic. Not this is not quite the same thing, but I saw a picture of like uh, Wembenyama standing next to like a five foot four yeah. guy in Japan, and just like you got these like goofy guys that are bouncing off LeBron, and you know <laughs> the the one image of the one guy on the ground, LeBron just flexing. You know, I think it's yeah. great. And it's you got those images, then you got the seven the two foot difference, and it's just like what a what a fun uh, game to watch, honestly. And my and KD, favorite, by the way, I mean, we got to bring him up at some point. Yeah, well, I, I, again, um, KD was phenomenal. Freak. Uh, KD was – KD and LeBron showed that when we rank the players in the league yeah. – let, let me do this. Who yeah. are your top five players in the league, Harry? Well, I mean, top five. This, see, this, see, this is what I'm saying, man. It's hard now with the FIBA and all this weird shit because it's like I would have had Joel, but <laughs> I don't know. Can I even say it after watching this? But no, I mean, I'm going to say, yeah, Joel's in the top five. Joel, uh, Jokic, uh, I'll put Luka, Shea, and then who was else was in the MVP competition? Oh, and then I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe. KD or LeBron or, or Tatum. I don't know. I think the last five, it's, so, it's a toss-up. Jason? Yeah, we definitely dropped those. Oh, Giannis. Oh, my God. I didn't say Giannis. Giannis so. When you were leaving. Yeah, oh, geez. I knew it. <laughs> you agree with that, Jason? Uh, Joel would, and Joker. not the best player in the league. No, no. no top, five, top five. Then you, I didn't say in any order. I said uh, top yeah. five. So, yeah. Jokic, Embiid, uh, Giannis, Luka, and – yeah. I'll probably, maybe LeBron, maybe Shea. I don't know. That one's tough. The fifth so one is like, oh, the, the not Tatum. So That's the general not answer, Tatum, not Tatum. You're right. I don't know why I said that. My cousin who kept telling me that Tatum's top three player in the league, mm. and he's a Duke guy, and he likes Tatum for some reason. I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but uh, I got he actually made me angry. I was talking about it. The top five in the league right now generally are Joel, Joker, Luca, SGA, and Giannis. Yeah, right. and. KD and LeBron are better than them. Yes. The reason that they're not. <laughs> they're, they're better at basketball. Like they know. Yeah. 
they're they're better than them. I don't give a shit what the fuck you're talking about. They're better than them. <laughs> they're better than them at life, at dating, at fucking everything. Right, now better. you're just now you're just fan going too crazy. Now hey, you're crazy. Any, Kate, they're, they're, listen to this. LeBron the Suns the Suns are shit, bro. The Suns are trash. The Lakers are trash. Like, what are you talking about? Let me finish my goddamn statement. You understand why the fuck I'm telling you that they're better than them? Stop Jeez. making me cuss. They're better. I don't think you do anything. They're better than them. You are. You're stopping me. I'm trying to tell you exactly what you just said. They're better than them. They're being held down by crappy organizations that aren't putting a helpful team around them to help them excel and exceed. The Suns just need a dang on point guard. They went and did everything else. They couldn't get a point guard. They didn't need Beal. They needed somebody who could run a team. And PG was too pig-headed and hard-headed to keep around. I understand that, but they need a point guard. They don't have one. LeBron, he also probably needs a point guard because he ends up being a point guard. So the, the teams are failing them when they can't excel. Because when you look at them playing basketball, quote-unquote, together or with an elite team around them, KD could just shoot. When he shoots for free, he can make any shot across the court. But when he's sitting there stressing, like, man, I, I, I got to bring the ball up too. Booker's turning it over. Beal's hurt every other week. Man, this shit sucks. Like, I, you know, I, obviously he put himself in those positions, but yeah. KD is still all world. And when you watch LeBron James, again, go against a Serbian seven-foot-two tank and make him go backwards, you think to yourself, well, holy shit. He can actually play all five positions. Then I got to hear Perkins' dumbass say, well, Tatum could have played the five. Tatum can't play the guy. Tatum can play two <laughs> positions. Yep. He can't play the point, and he can't play center. He he play wing. And he he might be uh, off guard. But I'm like, LeBron and KD are still. I'm not gonna give them top five, but shit, if they're not six and seven, and that's just all for respect of their gameplay is my point. So what you're saying, Harry, is what I was trying to say. Fucking <laughs> goddamn Phoenix, <laughs> fuck them over. <laughs> Then KD's ever like, man, I miss Russ. Then he's like, no, I don't. No, I don't. Right? Like, he has like that half second thought. And he's like, no, 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 no. That's crazy. I, I know KD missed it uh, hanging out with Steph. And then we had to listen to her. Hell yeah, bro. All them plays for him. He's like, oh, baby, I missed it, daddy. Oh, daddy. He definitely regrets that one. He's like, what the hell did I ever leave there for? Uh, well, he could have had four rings, maybe five rings uh, himself. What's his name? Um, I can't believe what's his name ran me up out of here. Uh, Draymond. Draymond. Yeah, Draymond. Draymond, that's what I'm, Draymond okay. called him a bitch. Help yeah. Me. Oh my God. Draymond's a. <laughs> and uh, I say, Harry, as far as family's concerned, LeBron James ain't had one dang gum scandal. He done got his son drafted. His next son's gonna be president of the United States. Oh, are those basketball uh, points you're making, or are those separate? No, no. I said, I said they're better than him in life and everything. I what are we talking kidding. about? You just changed. You're bringing up a new uh, old shit. You're bringing up no, no, different shit. I know, I know. I'm trying to finish my point because I was getting interrupted. Right. I'm trying to explain what I'm saying. You can, LeBron, okay, go to it. LeBron getting his son drafted, and the next son going to hurt. <laughs> KD is is the ultimate sniper. This dude is a player's play. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, like you, he just got women coming and going left yeah, and right. Yep. <laughs> He's single like a Pringle. So it's like a day or two is fine. A day or two is plenty. That's what he said. Yeah. Right? What, what's the ultimate bachelor? The other one's ultimate family man. So I said they better. <laughs> They better life than everybody else playing basketball right now, uh, and we're lucky to have. Them yes, TV. that was hyperbolic, but I I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yes, the, you put you put those two. Listen, you put those two with other best players in the world, and they can just manipulate the game with their intelligence and the way they play. Like they're gonna do whatever they want. That's what they're doing, and it's cool to see. But hilariously, talking about Tatum and all this other stuff, LeBron, <laughs> LeBron was in the game when they were up by like 20, and he played like 20 minutes already, and Tatum couldn't get one minute. Like, <laughs> you know, there was an opportunity. It's kind of hilarious that uh, Tatum didn't get any tick. It's pretty funny. So it makes me so happy yes because we all know here on this show and if you don't know i'll remind you i hate wardell stephen curry you probably didn't even know his name was <laughs> i thought you were saying the celtics then you brought up steph what the what and I, and I hate i hate him he's my most hated player of all time my <laughs> second hated player of all time now is jason tatum i oh. despise jason tatum with all my heart i think he is a raggedy corny lazy lame boogity boo piece of shit <laughs> I don't give a fuck how cute his son is I feel bad that his son has to have a punk ass whack ass daddy like him and <laughs> Brown was the conference finals MVP and he was the finals MVP so my cousin out here telling me DQ out right here telling me that he's top three in the league nigga ain't even top three on his team because Devin White's on team USA Derek and White. Brown was MVP two times so as far yep. as I'm Tatum can suck a Tatum and sit on that bench and look sad and mad instead of clapping his hands like Halliburton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh, go. <laughs> so, I was gonna say, one of, one of, one of your Sixers. So 
Yeah. One of the Sixers boys you don't like, he, somebody posted something, uh, uh, and they, they were like, some, someone commented, and they were like, what does Derek White do better than Jason Tatum? This guy's like, uh, everything. <laughs> he like, shoots, passes, runs the point, plays better defense, better rim protector. Like, God damn, what do you mean? Like, he's a better player than Jason Tatum. I was like, when you break it down like that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I put Derek White on any team, and they're getting better. I mean, immediately. Yeah, that so. me up, you know what Derek White does better than Jason Tatum? Plays what? guard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> plays exactly. He plays a position that Tatum doesn't. <laughs> and, and you know what he does? He shuts the fuck up and does what he's told. Oh, he yeah. Blocks- <laughs> and and you know what yep. else he does? He doesn't yell Kobe every time he shoots right. the basketball. But he's just rolling up bricks in practice. <laughs> when they had their they have a like the you know the, the open runs or whatever you watch the team USA practice, Jason Tatum was gunning. He was gunning. And they his team lost to LeBron's team. LeBron's like, hey, here, look here, young whooping snapper. You know what right. I mean? And he, even Edwards, who I see we don't have Edwards on there. And Edward Ball. Uh, he was he was he was the other one I was like resisting saying just because I yeah. you know. You, yeah, we, we we love Edwards. We but he's next. About he's next. Season. Yeah, he's in there. But that's what I'm saying when when you that's what I'm saying about how good LeBron and KD still are. Oh yeah, they're still Edwards, yeah. Edwards walked into that mammy dammy talking mad shit. Yo, end of the game play, it's gonna be me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, who the best player on the team is me. And then when the game started, he in the interview afterwards, they're like, Yes, yeah, so what happened? He's like LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron James. <laughs> he took time, he's like LeBron James. He's like, yeah. we all know each other, and it was like uh LeBron like He's just like he backed off, and then he said the other day about Katie. He's like, yeah, I don't know. Katie was six for six. LeBron was five for six, and I'm just like, wow. Yeah, and that's the dude with all the bravado. He's yeah. the one. He he out there oh, yeah. back his chest. Katie so. was his favorite player, right? Wasn't yeah, yeah. Katie, right? Katie was his. Katie is his. He said something weird. He called him like his inspiration. Oh, or something like that. Like he he put her on. A, he didn't. Oh yeah, he, he's his hero, hero like that for real, yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah, for sure. Said, yeah, he called him like his inspiration to play basketball because he he plays the game so beautifully. Like you know what I mean? Like all that. No, and, and going off of that real quick, just the whole thing about KD. Like you know, he ain't the goat, right? He ain't he ain't the best yeah. scorer ever. But but this Olympic KD, right? This ability to just all you have to do, KD, when you're open, shoot. Like that's it, bro. Yeah. Just get the ball and shoot it every time, and just and just knock down shots, knock down the short three pointer <laughs> whenever you want to. Like it's a, it's amazing to watch. Because he really is just out there just frolicking around, like just keeping the ball and I'm shooting. It's it's crazy. And then LeBron's obviously killing it. Joel, like it's FIBA. He can't foul beat as much as I hate to use that term. So it is what it is. KD is also the league, whatever you want to call it. He is the leader of points in the Olympics. Yeah, highest um, point yes. score. Yeah, in LeBron, history, yeah, LeBron is right behind him, and LeBron is the league leading rebounder or assist. Listen, I thought it was, what do you mean, averages or like Melo's? I thought Melo was second. points. Now, whatever it is, it's LeBron and, and KD right now, and they're very close to each other. Right. Um, and they, I just watched the thing today. Oh, was, Olympics? Okay. Yeah, yeah Olympics-wise. Olympics maybe wise. I was thinking maybe FIBA, I was thinking. Um, so... Hey, Embiid is the best screen setter out there, though. I was gonna say at the end of the day, like <laughs> that's a that's a that's a joke you're making, but he really is. No, uh, actually, being Steph, serious. no, he's yeah, been yeah. me most of the time. But when he gets out there and he's setting the screens, it gets Steph and KD wide. Oh yeah, I was so, gonna say the reason that LeBron and Steph and Embiid were like the guys that are locked into the starting lineup is because that's a crazy dynamic. I mean, LeBron can just kind of use Joel to manipulate to get Steph open, and I mean it's it's a crazy three minute game. Right. So well, jo- Joel just doesn't need to start the games. So he needs to come in. In the second quarter, and he needs to come in, in the third quarter, and he doesn't need to finish games. Right. He doesn't need to start games, and I, I'd be happy with him because when he starts, the games are so we get down, and then as soon as he hits the bench, next thing you know, we're up twenty points. So I'm like, well, right. the only difference is they swapped out, right? AD Whether it's Bam or AB, the offense just yeah, looks better because they're just because they're faster, and yeah. and the the world's faster. It's not yeah. even just Embiid being slow. That's not even I, I I've been get, I've been getting on one internet, but I'm really mad about what he's been saying in interviews and podcasts while he's over yeah. there in his free time. He has so much turned into a woe is me. I'm the hated guy. Why isn't everybody like me? But you know, I'm just out here doing what I need to do. And it's not my fault. I don't have a loaded team like Tatum and I don't right. have this and I never had that. And then like, bro, just, Again, just come shut up. Like yeah, I feel you, but there's, there's a certain level of just yapping, right? Like the term kids use these days. Like he's just yapping, bro. He's just yapping. Like he's just talking. It, it is what it is. I don't think it matters in terms of what we would get out of him or what the year is going to be like. It's going to be annoying, but like I don't take it any. You know, it is what it is. Like I just think it shows a little bit of his lack of accountability for himself for <clears throat> the Sixers' issues. 
and you and I, you are I, yeah. and you are what you say. I, I know what you just said, but, but I, I feel like he's just saying it. You know what I mean, like I understand what you're saying, Jason, but he's just like, uh, this is what I feel, and then he's just like, whatever. But if he doesn't understand yeah, that, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I should, I'm I know. listening to Tyrese Maxey talk about how Joel has stepped up year after year and become this dominant guy in the locker room, become this voice of the team, and he's inspired him. And did, I was like, who the fuck are you talking about? Because I'm listening to the words out of his mouth in public all the time. Who you're talking? about and what i hear is totally different and again that could be something i I say it all the time it's just like nick sirianni is just a shit public speaker but apparently when he's behind the door most of the guys like the rah rah flower stuff and they support him i get that that can happen but my god joel help yourself out a little bit because i want to be i want to hear the things that tyrese says because even pg who's a veteran knows that when you're out in la and you're like bro i'm just doing my best if we win we win at the end of the day it is what it is you can say that in L.A. The Clippers ain't never won nothing. They're the little brother. Those fans are just happy to be there, and everybody's going to make fun of you no matter what. And he's PG, so he can, yeah, you yeah. Know. But as soon as he comes here and he signs a guaranteed contract, he ain't going nowhere. Now what's he talking about? Well, championship bus. We got to get the championship. We're out here for championship. I'm having to work. Because you can't talk like that in quote-unquote certain markets. And if Joel Embiid was doing all the things that Tyrese says he's done as maturing, he wouldn't be yapping like that when you're the captain of the ship. And again, make fun of LeBron James but when he's out there flexing in the world games. He's flexing, like you said. Well, sometimes these dudes are five for five, and they've been playing in the- <laughs> South Sudan. Why is LeBron James walking up on him roaring like they're like, do you know that I kill lions for real? You're not whoa, the king whoa. lion. Like, why are you roaring at me? Like. <laughs> He goes out there and he does it because that's what you do. I don't you know, know what we're I'm going saying? Gilbert Arenas today. Uh, hey, look, I didn't throw no dark people. Like, oh, first of all, just to say that too, you can make jokes and make voices and do all yeah, the things you want to. Gilbert was fine if he wouldn't have did the whole he went dark great. thing. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Like, all the time, like, okay, you know, you make voices. Eddie Murphy does that stuff all the time. Like, yeah. Black people make fun of Africans all the time. Africans make fun of black people all the time. But when you start calling, if you call somebody like a spear chucker, or if you're like <laughs> dart sounds like the, I was like, yo, I was like real at it, okay? Yeah, he went a little. Far. He went. He He's far. crazy, bro. He's crazy. I, I was toting the line with my my. No ass. chill, Gil, baby. No chill, oh, Gil. That's it. <laughs> oh, man, look, <laughs> That AC unit is busting. Yeah, I'm freezing, like, baby. You can get a breeze out there. Oh, my man. God. You can get a breeze. Um, yeah. So uh, we, we talked about it, Simone, and the girls out there. They won gold. Congratulations to them. Um, the, the, the Sharks in the water and the swim team, they're out there killing it, too. Uh, one thing that I did watch, and I don't know if they won gold or not, but if you can watch fencing mm-hmm. oh, and yeah. rugby. The women's oh, rugby. Yeah. Runs for the first time ever the today on a walk ninety nine yard yeah like it was a walk off crazy. full field like crazy point I wanted to call it a touchdown but it was a point yeah. a it was equivalent field. it was equivalent of like a, a time expiring ninety nine yard touchdown to win yeah. to win the bronze medal yeah. so Insane. if you can if you can go check out the highlights of those games yeah. um, obviously I can't play them here because they'll flag yeah. me the Olympics they don't play when you <laughs> put up clips of the Olympics oh no 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 you got to stream East that John baby yeah. <laughs> Uh, rugby uh shout out to those women who were, again first time like you said medal and getting bronze yeah. and their captain i forget what her name is but man Alona this girl, Millar, I think, or... oh i mean i eh, or maybe that's something talking about the big the big girl who's pre- yeah and, she, and she's, she's, she's she's big my size too she always she's pretty no she's hey, yeah no, she's only five ten two hundred she's solid five ten two hundred yep yep two hundred she's like a tank out there boy she got that buck a buck oh, yeah. she gave like uh, there's one run, like I said, just gotta just go to NBC and let's like, you'll see it. She had a run where she stiff armed three people in this spin yep. move and yeah. pushed a girl in her back out of the way. I'm like, hey yo, <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> she's a street sweeper. That girl yeah. was moving people. I was like, yep. golly, can the Eagles draft her? Like, I know we got my lot out here. Yeah. What the hell? Why don't more NFL teams pick up rugby players? Because they're not them- all six, seven, three hundred pounds like my lot. They're not all- <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of big boys. Out they're not that not that big, bro. During my lot, wasn't like Olympic level. You know what I mean? He was good. Hey, but- give him a chance. That's all. No, I'm you're saying. right. You're right. A lot of them, you know, um, they could do it. So, we know the uh, kickers. You get the Australian rugby boys. That's what we yeah. get. Yeah, also, Sav Raka, baby. Shout out Sav Raka. <laughs> uh, if you're That's following me on on uh, TikTok or Instagram, I haven't posted yet, but I, I saved a video. And this girl was fencing. And, you know, fencing is just like Star Wars lightsaber fights without the lights. That's crazy. And uh, 
This chick was doing the eh, 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 eh. <laughs> jabbed at the girl, and the girl dipped the jab, and she came with like a swoop. Right. And the girl did the Sir Lancelot shit over her shoulder, blocked her, her oh, shit. Oh, Perry. <laughs> Yo! Yo. Oh, my, oh, my God. <laughs> well, I caught that live, too, because I was like, we were, I was supposed to do stuff with my daughter. And I, I popped that on. I was like, oh, the fence. And like, you know what I mean? It's cool. And it was, it was so wow, 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 wow. Yeah. And when she did that, I was like, oh, my God. I rewound that joint like 20 times. <laughs> I went and found a clip of it because I just want to. I just want to marvel at it. So if you, if yeah. you can watch some of the events that are going on, um, I also got uh, showed up by my child too. Again, uh, the Olympics. I was uh, it was like, oh, this is boxing. Uh, we watch women's boxing, and then it, it, what's cool is you can just jump into like thirty different events. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And watch stuff. Um, and I, I I was like, oh, what is it? What the heck's an equestrian? Horse. Oh yeah, horse stuff. <laughs> oh oh, just everybody. I guess white people just know. The equestrian is horses. Comes with the mustache. Yes. <laughs> is that exactly. what it is? Uh, apparently, uh, I, I guess I'm the only dummy then. I'm the it's, one. Uh, I, believe it, I believe it's horse stuff. Uh, I believe yeah. that's what it is. Well, and, and, no, it's and in it, a book. And it was, horse related stuff. And it was just horse around here. <laughs> that's all. That's all. It, was, it was the horse. It was like them jumping over the little bushes type thing. Yeah, yeah I don't mean, I don't know if that's what equestrian technically is. If there is when they jump the bushes or whatever. I think it's variations <laughs> of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's the steeple chase, but that might not be right. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, that's a guess. I was. We learning. We're learning. Um, also, um, archery was pretty dope. Like I said, yeah, like the shooting. This, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like the straight like beat 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 with those those girls. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah. Fine. They're all like just little, you know, unathletic looking. A lot of a lot of Asians made it to the <laughs> to the yeah. finals. That's of the shooting stuff. It was really they're really really and, impressive. I saw and, real and, quick a highlight. It was the uh, the final of like the men's mountain biking, bro. That was crazy. Like they almost crashed into each other. The one guy's like had a malfunction to start the race. Still ended up winning. Like. It was it was intense. So there's a lot of cool events, man. A lot of cool events. Yeah, I, and those girls with the bow and arrows, like I don't know if you ever shot a bow. They're pulling back. Some of them are pulling back 75 pounds of pressure. Yeah, and they're getting yeah. that thing like it's nothing. Like oh, I'm like, whoa, okay. And I'm pretty sure there's like some like sideways recoil because you're kind of you know you're holding it like on the side of the bow. It's not like directly straight. So they they keep it so steady. It's and, crazy. And that's the, that's the thing too. Like when you get down to um, a custom bow, because I've shot mm. bow and arrow and i've hunted before and i'm like oh this is cool but it's annoying then when you go with somebody who is a hunter's hunter and like even a bow that's custom like built just for them shooting that is a night and day difference like because mm -hmm. i'm saying like how are you not breaking your face yeah. and you're like oh the, the the carbon fiber on the way the tension the recoil <laughs> pulls back and i'm like oh, okay bullshit i pulled that thing and it was like yeah i was like oh, okay <laughs> how about this thing? he's like oh this is not a hundred dollars i was like oh, i hunt it Damn! <laughs> for the bow. Oh my god! So yeah, they they got specialty equipment out there. But it, again, tapping on the Olympics, there's this fun stuff every day, everywhere. And uh, if you're still crying about the opening of the Olympics, the funny thing about that is that they only do it one time. Yeah. And if you've never <laughs> been to Paris, France, and you didn't know that there were rats everywhere, and 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 weird people with hair underneath their arms, and bearded ladies everywhere because it's France, and they don't care about shaving or uh, <laughs> the yeah. and uh, they have this thing called like the Louvre where you can actually go look at art and find out how art is and where it was made and where it came from and what Greek mythology is versus biblical mythology and you can understand all these things when they go and put out there because they are artists there you know what I mean and when you get mad about the Statue of Liberty <laughs> thank you did France I, did, I, did Alabama make the Statue of Liberty <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, or, was it, uh, or was it was it Kentucky that that made the Statue of Liberty and brought us? It had, it, I think it was Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, Actually, Jackson, Mississippi. Yes, I yes. think it might have been Jackson, Mississippi too. So, so maybe you don't critique the people that gave you the item. <laughs> that you know what I mean? Like our greatest know. statue ever. Yeah, it's it's green. It's not blue. I was like, well, you know, that's because we don't clean that damn. <laughs> I was, I was that's us. Like, well, you know, when you put something out in the sun and it kind of fades over a hundred years. Oxidation. Oh, yeah. I get oxidation. I'm just like, uh, I mean, I know it's a lot of words. Certain people out here. You know what I mean? There's a lot of science involved, but you know. Equestrian, equestrian. Equestrian, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dumb ass didn't know, so, I, I, <laughs> there's so much I can say. But I mean, my goodness, so many people uh, had their uh, uh, peripheral panties in a bunch 
over the opening because they're fake religious people and don't even know what yeah. their religion is actually about. <laughs> because at the end of the day, too, uh, if you're into that kind of religion, that dude said, love everybody. And they still stuck him to a cross and killed him. So you should love everybody and <laughs> yes. hope that nobody sticks you to a cross. You should forgive all and not say, I'm not watching the dang gum Olympics because they put a starship out there with a thing on a horse. And it looked like the horse of the apocalypse. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. It was the, <laughs> the, the horse he came in on, right? Yeah. In, in the Bible. Yeah, man, he I had mean, like three homies with him, right? With the three oh, homies. Oh, well, no, it was only one horse, but oh. it was the pale horse. Okay, yeah, but, but there were the four horsemen, right? Ah, there yes. Were four of them, right? Okay. So again, art. Yeah, you Rick know what Flair I mean? was one yeah, of the four Rick horsemen. Flair, uh, 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 oh, uh, uh, I think the Undertaker was yeah. definitely one of them. He always coming back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, Austin three sixties. Uh, what? 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 Here, brother. Here, what? I'll tell you what, Al, I, I think I saw Hulk Hogan on the back of one of those horses, you know what I mean? I a real American. You know? It's just insane to me, the things that people are trying to complain about. So if you're not watching Lemmings because of the opening and you're probably not going to watch this show, uh, I did lose some subscribers, guys. I did a pol- I do apologize for that because um, I've tweeted out a couple of rational statements on the internet. <laughs> you crazy. Uh, so right. the, the hate followers are coming back. The bird's about <laughs> to be here, so it's all good. Hey, uh, hey, Kate. Kate's back. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, so Kate. Yeah, see? So Jay's about to, too, by the way. Kate left a, a thirst trap in my phone when I was at the house. Yeah, a couple of pictures, a thirst trap in there, and it said "For Harry" on the picture. That's what she put in the notes. Like, oh, God, she shows up. Mm-hmm. But Harry's here. I'm starting to see a pattern. Totally see. Nope. But it was for you know what I mean. See, oh, just because he looks like that, Kate, don't mean he's going to kidnap you and give you ice cream and or candy. He doesn't even have a car right now, so don't no. worry. Indigo up bike, we do van, and taking you off. And whisking you on vacation. She texts me like, I just got home. Is Harry on? See? <laughs> can't, can't, can't even live my life. Um, don't follow Harry on social media. You can follow Jason. You'll be tagged in the, in the comment section. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. There's going to be some structure coming to this show in the next couple of weeks. Greer it up for uh, Red October, Sixers Nations, and uh, the Eagles bag, baby. I mean, for right now. Turn on the Olympics. Support America. We got a whole bunch of medals. We need more. Gold. God bless America, baby. God bless America. Oh, wait. Hold on. Matter of fact, let me go. Let me find out one thing real quick just so we can get some clarity on it because I want to <clears throat> keep Harry involved and keep Harry accountable about being accountable when there's um, something to be accountable about. Uh, so, I have no what? idea. What you're t- I have no idea yeah. what you're talking oh. about. The, the, the Harry Principal's don't, office now. Quit bringing up old shit. Quit bringing up old shit. <laughs> Harry, when Harry interrupt my rant, I'm going to get back to it. I'm see, just Harry here so think, I don't get fined. Harry, see, Harry thinks he's slick. He That's because like, you want to trickle in the they got they fail at life and all this other shit. I'm just like. I didn't say MJ fell at life. Oh, I didn't say MJ. I said they. I said they. I was saying they to the current day. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't even going back to the old school. You know what I mean? I didn't even bring up the. You know what I mean? The reason that they won them championships and the gold medal. I mean, <laughs> and D Wade was the one of the redeemed team for sure. Yeah, hey, hey, redeem, hey, redeem, redeem. I mean, I mean, Baldy, I Baldy D Wade. What I'm supposed to do? Le- Le- LeBron James out here getting blamed. He he, 19 <laughs> years old. Tim Duncan out there, three time champion. Just I know. Saying, I saw that. I saw that the other day. I saw some meme, bro. Two time champion, two time MVP. <laughs> Looking at I, LeBron I, and Melo. I tried to say that to my cousin back in the day when it happened. And he was like, "Yeah, Tim Duncan. Jim Duncan was injured." I'm like, "What?" Oh, yeah, yeah. I think injured. Tim was not injured. I think I vaguely remember that actually a little bit. Yeah, I was like, "Well, Tim was out there. That's all I know. I don't want to hear nothing about no dang." He got away there. with that. He really got away. <laughs> That's oh, never yeah, brought up, bro. Yeah, he did. He uh, never bring it up. Let me see. Also, Hakeem Olajuwon, Tim Duncan, all these—I mean, Tim Duncan, Virgin <laughs> Islands. But Hakeem was on the U.S. team. Like, damn, Joel can't get. In. <laughs> well, and and that's the crazy thing too, right? Because um, they they. What is it? You know, they made the joke like, oh, when Jordan and them were out there, they went against Tony Kukoc. He was the best international player. Yeah. And now you're looking at like, if if Embiid wasn't on this team, it would be like 70 (laughs) top (laughs) NBA players that are just out there. I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, Embiid on France, I don't know how they'd work it out, but like, that would would be helpful. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) 
um yeah steve steve kerr got had to go and apologize and say that he forgot oh about tatum <laughs> yeah bro hilarious he's like i'll play him next game he's gonna play next. <laughs> i'll get he'll put play for sure he was all over the place with his reasons why he was like yeah. i told him he probably wasn't gonna play he was like, I forgot. individual gold medal because everybody was so mad and upset about it. harry could you hear what that when i was just playing? yeah i heard it yep okay so let me just run that back how much are individual gold medals worth in each country yeah. by territory the u.s wait we only get thirty-seven thousand. we should at least two hundred thousand. hey no i'm out <laughs> If you win the hundred meter gold, me and Ocho twenty five thousand a piece. Bet you know I don't like to spend no money. You do, Shakira. <laughs> you get that hundred, nephew. Hey, right. You win the gold, twenty five k. Noah Lyles trained four years for nine seconds. Noah, we got you. <laughs> oh, see it. Oh, the hurdle. Yeah. You might as well mail see it. Her check now. Yeah, that's hundred k. We good. I'll pay fifty thousand any American to break a world record. I don't give a damn what the event is. Hold on. Out of my pocket. I got 50. Here go 50,000 right here. Sometimes you need a little motivation, right? I got another 50 right here. We're not playing. 37,000. You done bust your ass for four years straight to represent our country in the payout saying thank you for the work you put in is 37 fucking thousand. Come on, man. And it's the American way. And just, and just on <laughs> It's just funny. Ocho doesn't know shit about anything, bro. Everything's like so brand new to him. Like whenever yeah. he hears anything, dude, I'm like, this is, they've been working, they've working at Home Depot since I've been a kid, like in off season. So, you know. So uh, Ocho Cinco has always been himself. Yeah. But his mm. brand of being cheap, not, not <laughs> <you> know, McDonald's <laughs> every day. His, his <laughs> brand of being cheap, his brand of being frugal. His his brand of I don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it could get explained to me. It that's good showmanship because he knows everything. This dude be out here traveling. He be going to places. Gets invited to all these events. He's he's very heavily involved in sports betting. So it's funny. Like you just what you just said is is such good acting by him because he's like I can't believe he, he does say like, <laughs> I didn't know and then five if you watch the actual podcast 10 minutes later he's telling us so because he's like yeah such and such happened with such and such back in 77 I'm like hey, you just said you ain't never you you just told me what the was now you're out here telling me there's a backwards pony hop to the left so I'm like all right but he, he plays that up so yeah. well especially with Shannon and it is so funny because he 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 makes himself excited about oh, yeah. it, it reminds me kind of like how Snoop has become the mascot for America mm-hmm. or the world almost at this point. I, you're, getting, I, you're getting close. I, 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 I didn't get him to the world yet. I didn't get no, him to the no. world yet. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to keep him wrecked. He, he he got the he got the red, white, and blue on with the hoopy hoop. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still ours, but he coming close. He's out there, but it, it's yeah, for real. It's like dog murder was the case that they gave him, and now yeah. like, <laughs> carrying the torch for <laughs> real. Carrying Dude, the cr- that's what I'm saying. Like Snoop, what the hell is life, man? Yo. Snoop D O Snoop J- doggy style, baby. Oh, no. like, I would tell you something. That's crazy. You and everybody you know directly probably could never have the kind of life turnaround that that guy has had. Right. I don't think that anybody's had the kind of arc that he has. Like Snoop Dogg is insane <laughs> when you think about it. Yes, <laughs> insane, you know, dude. I'm gonna tell you something. Bitches ain't shit, but hoes and, hoes and tricks. No. Lick on the nuts and suck the dick. Mm. Get the fuck out after I'm done, bitch, because I got to make a quick run. And now he's holding the goddamn flag. And <laughs> like, how is that possible? How is it possible? Oh, oh my God. Possible. Only, in Only in America. Only in America. Only in America. Oh, my God. Only in America could LeBron James be the first basketball player to ask to hold the goddamn gum torch for a world ceremony. Appreciate you, yes, thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you, Lay. Uh, that that is the one thing that I I, I am tired of hearing of because they call him Lay USA. Lay I know, I, I, Captain America. It's I, I'm into yeah. it. I'm into it. Oh, it's 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 yeah. it's just hilarious because you know I I, I even like when I, I, even <laughs> like, I even like La Flop. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that they put on everything on Lay. Whatever, and it's funnier too because it's in France. Like, so yeah, said, Lay. Like. <laughs> Oh, is that a French thing? And I'm like, his name's LeBron. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's Le French. Bear. Exactly. Le, LeBron. LeBron. I, was like, I, was like, what you, I was like, what do you mean? Is it French? And I'm like, oh, shit, it's in France. Like, no, it's just <laughs> America. Like, it's America. It's the most American name of all time, actually. If you think yeah, about right? it. <laughs> I, 
I was born from Paris, dog. Like, Paris, like, Texas, baby. Like, no, <laughs> Paris, Ohio. This might, this might be his last run, or it might be yeah. the second to last run. I told you he's got to get Bronny those Tatum minutes. Hey, look. <laughs> Again. <laughs> One of the joys of my life was Taylor not getting into that game because he is going to get in the next game and he is going to get minutes. Um, but as you said earlier, Harry, again, going back to old stuff, <clears throat> when he's in there getting those points, the points matter because of the system. It's the same way that they were doing with the in season tournament. The, the points matter. So when Skip Bayless is like, LeBron's in here past that, and that's why him and KD are still, oh, KD's still in the game too because they want right. to win by the most points. So Steph, in case, they, <laughs> in case they get a close loss or a close win, you need the points because the points matter, dummy. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, if I was Tatum, I'd be real. Sad. I know, but that's that's the that even makes it even better is because like there was kind of garbage time where you're like, we are America, shouldn't we be able to put Jason Tatum in and still <laughs> go like, up or know, like win by it? It's like, nah, he's fucking up. He's gonna take all the shots. He's not, you know, <laughs> shooting thirty three percent, like whatever. Nah, <laughs> he should be a negative on the court, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> for real. I mean, he's gonna go in there and fuck it all up. So let me keep him over here. And Jason Tatum ain't even top ten. And he got that baby ass haircut again, so he looks like a little kid there too, just sitting there, <laughs> like just a little head, just all sad. <laughs> um, like I said, we'll be back next week on Tuesdays, every Tuesday night live at nine p.m. Uh, follow us, uh, subscribe on the YouTube, leave comments, make yourself useful, and uh, if you're like Kate and you're just here for Harry. Uh, leave a comment on whether or not we should uh, let him have this mustache or not. I do have the power to veto. I can't. I can't control Harry's hair. Uh, but I can't, uh, I can't even grow the MJ slash uh, Hitler stash because I got the middle missing. So. Oh Lord! Now I got to bleep this episode out. Now the I MJ gotta... stash. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, bro. We we talk about the World Olympics and we Haynes. Yeah, exactly. The Olympics. <laughs> he came and dropped his name up in here. They gonna be like, let me throw up a power fist. Shout out Jesse Owens. Come on, shout. Out. Here we go. Yo, let me go with Jesse you know, Owens. See, now, now we got the rope on cutting the mustache. You know <laughs> you see what happens? You let I it fucked go. it up. I fucked it up. Here, you know what I mean? Next thing I know, he's going to be minivan shop. See, that's because we had oh, over an hour and a half. I start yapping. You start bringing up. I start bringing up stuff. You know what I'm saying? got to keep me. Keep me. You out here, Joel all right, everybody, we out. Harry's gonna have to issue an apology tomorrow. Like, I'm very sorry about the words that I said. <laughs> the words, like, and I'm upset about this mustache. We out.